so one of the videos they did the best out of all my uh, videos, you know, you, <laughs> you know, okay, this thing, uh, YouTube and is, hold on, let me turn. All right, I had to turn my mic up some, man. You know, y'all know I got that, uh, I got that slow, sexy voice, man. <laughs> you know, I be speaking in a love tone. And speaking in a love tone, um, it ain't real loud, you know. The love tone is real low, easy on the ears, man. So, I feel like this is one of those love tone videos. You know, I had a loud. Huh? <sighs> Okay, it might just be because it's 11 o'clock at night. I had a long day. <laughs> yeah, I had a long day painting my mama's house, man. Uh, you know, it's one of those uh, help your mama out jobs. You know, it took me about a month, but finally got it done, you know. Might have went a little faster if mama would have gave me a couple of dollars. But hey, man, you know. I can talk about my mama when I do stories because she never going to listen to them. <laughs> my mama is a Chicago gangster rap fan, man. So, uh, you know, since I ain't rapping, she ain't, she ain't going to listen to me talk. She going to listen to them Chicago gangster rap, though. But anyway, moving on. <laughs> I can talk about my whole family because they don't. They don't listen to nothing. My brother said he listened to the one I did about uh, redlining. And um, I was surprised, boy. He caught me off guard when he said that, man. You know, so. Yeah, they don't, they don't listen to my stuff. But, you know, that's the thing, though, man. You ain't got to. You know, I be telling folk, um, you know, it ain't. When you're doing. When you're a creator of whatever you create or. When you're a business person in general, man, don't try to make all your money with your family and friends because it's just going to lead to you getting upset. So when I make stuff, I don't put it out on Facebook. Every now and then, I might put something on Facebook every three, four, five, six months or something. But on a regular basis, no, because I'm not doing this for my Facebook friends and family. You know, you ain't going to make no money or make no... I ain't get. I ain't gonna get no off them, man. You know, folk be doing mixtapes and trying to get they sending mass text messages out to all their friends and stuff. Look, go find people who like what you like, and that's who your audience. You know, so my 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 audience. Yeah, I do this for y'all. I don't do it for my friends and family and for myself. I do it for y'all, man. And uh, I'm appreciative of folk like Steffi and folk like. You know, I don't want to just start calling no individual names out because it's a lot of y'all that send stories. And I appreciate y'all for sending stories. Hood Horror Creepy Pasta at gmail.com. That's Hood Horror Creepy Pasta at gmail.com. So I appreciate y'all that send stories, man. And um, even y'all who don't send them, I understand. Everybody can't, you know, write and put thoughts and stuff down and stuff. But y'all that take the time to do it. I appreciate it, and it would take me a, t a little while to get to them sometimes, because I get so many of them, and so much other stories and stuff I be trying to have going, and I be trying to not use them all <laughs> up at one time, so I appreciate y'all, man, and uh, keep on sending them, so, man, I've been talking for four minutes, boy, like I ain't got a story to tell, but y'all enjoy my talking anyway, right? And plus, when when you're talking in a love tone, when you know how to speak in that love tone like I do, baby, folk can listen to you talk all day long, man. So anyway, this story is from Miss Steffi. She sent me another story about how her mama was a prison guard and a prison witch cursed the whole family. And the family had been dealing with this stuff for a while. But Steffi seems to be the, the curse breaker. <laughs> she seems to be very rich in spirit, man. I don't know if she rich um in uh physically or financially or whatever, but she's very rich in spirit, man. So I'm happy to see that she's so happy and she got some little kids. I don't know if the little lot look she always with kids and stuff and everybody always smiling. So I'm happy to see that she happy, man. So anyway. 
So and it reads like so. She said, from the first story that I shared was about the old lady that my mama encountered from my time working in a women's prison. Without more than a few things that happened throughout the many years since that happened. Now, well, of course, like I said, both of my parents ended up getting divorced. And a few years later, probably about 07, she ended up getting married again. Now, a few things happened on and off, but the one that really freaked me to the core was the one story I'm about to share. <sighs> now, um, I hate these stories because the stories y'all seeing and that y'all be like this stuff that y'all be sending this stuff like it really happened. And like y'all ain't sending this like, you know, I got some folk that send me stories that's like just fictional stories. But these is like this really happened stories. And I got a big imagination. So I can easily put myself in this situation. And um, it just would freak me out, man. You know, I done been through some some hood dramatic stuff, but I ain't never been through no supernatural dramatic stuff. So, you know, it's a feeling I never felt, but I don't think I, I don't think I want to feel it. You know, I ain't about that life, man. So I'm just, I'm really amazed at y'all that's been through this kind of stuff, man. Cause, uh, you know, if it was me, boy, I don't know if I'd be the same after, man. So she goes on to say, the story I want to share happened to me when I was about 17, which is year 08. And a little background on myself. I'm a female Native American from the Navajo tribe. Yeah, Navajo babies. Yeah, that's how, that's them. That's them. Uh, she, she, re, she for real, for real with hugs, boy. And at the time, my mama and her second husband were still murdered. Now my stepfather at the time went on to the time went to the mountain to haul back some firewood. Oh yeah, they real boy. They some real um, Native Americans, man. Going out to going out there uh, get firewood. <laughs> what? <laughs> and they not going to the stove or nothing. Not going to Home Depot or nothing. Or Walmart. I'm going to the mountains. And you know he is if is he Native American too? Because if he is, I know how he said it. I'm going to the how the Native Americans be talking. I'm going to the mountains. I'm going to get firewood. I don't know how many days I'll be gone. Two, maybe three. But when I get back, we'll have firewood. <laughs> now during the time out there, I kept feeling like unsafe and uncomfortable. And I had my earphones in at the time because my stepdaddy was running the chainsaw cutting into the logs, which I would carry back to the truck. Now, where we were parked at, I was pretty far from where we were cutting, so I was quite a ways to walk. I threw the log in and opened the truck to drink some water, and I took one side of my earphones out taking a break, and all of a sudden I heard somebody yelling my name. I took the other ear belt out and listened again, and nothing. I noticed the chainsaw wasn't running, so I figured it was my stepdaddy telling me to bring the logs back. So I began making my way back and seeing him standing there yelling out for me. I mean, standing there listening quietly, listening out for something. I told him what happened. He said, I thought you were yelling out for me. Boy, that sounded like a dang Wendigo, boy. Oh, boy, y'all better get up out there, man. That sounded like a dang Wendigo, man. If y'all don't know about the Wendigo, or the Wendigo, or the Wind Negro, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I'm going to do a story about the Wind Negro. I tell you, I, I don't worry, I'll tell you, I'm going to do it in a week or something if I don't forget. So anyway, somebody remind me to do the story of the Wind Negro. Uh, where am I, where am I, where am I? Uh, I told him what happened. He said, so he was saying that it almost sounded like me. And I told him the same thing, too. But we both said that it wasn't either of us. Now, we both kind of got creeped out, but ended up loading up the rest of the woods and headed home. Not thinking much about it. Of course, we never mentioned anything about it to Mama. Because she would just say that you guys are just putting things in our minds. Into your minds. So after the encounter with the old lady, she just tried to ignore anything like that. You know, being real. Go figure. Now, anyway, later that evening around 10, I was getting ready for bed but couldn't sleep at all. 
I'm sore and exhausted, and of course, I'm just want to sleep. So I played some music, which at the time, I believe there was no YouTube. Yeah, that was early, early in the YouTube. You know, that was it was early, man. And the only thing I had was just a big old stereo with CDs. Anyway, I ended up falling asleep and found myself waking up about somewhere close to 2 in the morning. I heard somebody calling my name again, like that same voice from the woods. Thinking it was my mama trying to call me, I got up and walked down the hallway to my room, but she was sound asleep. That's when I heard it again and followed it back down to the hallway to the living room and kitchen, which brought me, what the heck is wrong with you, Steffi? <laughs> At 17, you following voices in 2 a.m.? And what? Um, look, now, look, I ain't, look, this your fault. If you sitting there following that, then you, <laughs> that's on you, man. Because, uh, uh, guess what? Uh, Mama, daddy, y'all, I'm sleeping at the foot of y'all bed tonight. Why, son? Um, look, I'm sleeping at the foot of your bed. All right, we'll talk about it in the morning. <laughs> Man, or I'm sleeping with the TV on or something. I'm watching Nick at night all night, boomerang or something. So I ain't no man. I'm finna watch. What was you, Mash? Or what used to come on? Nah, Mash. That was way a long time ago when they used to come on TV at night. But we watching Nick at night all night. George Lopez and everybody love Raymond. And uh, t I'm watching TV Land, Good Times, uh, the Jeffersons. Uh, <laughs> shoot, ain't nowhere in the world. I'm finna uh, go check it. Shoot, mm -mm. two in the morning. Anyway, where we at? <laughs> and, uh, so I walked down the hall. They asleep. So I went to the living room, and kitchen. It brought me towards the back of the house, and there were three windows. Now, as I approached the window, I felt like this heaviness of fear come over me. My heart began racing and I felt the ground shake under me. It's almost like the feeling you get when you're waiting for the jump scare in a real good horror movie. It's almost like the feeling, okay, yeah, I just read that. Imagine that feeling but three times the intensity. Taking a deep breath, that's when I decided to just peek through the side of the curtains. When I looked outside, it was pretty dark except for the street light glaring about 50 feet away from the house. Then I looked the opposite way where the wood pile was at. I completely lost my breath as I looked up way to the top of the wood pile and there sitting on the top was an old woman or man. The way I would describe this thing was his face was painted gray and red eyes with his hair sticking out from all sides with his body black and that thing was pointing his finger at me and at this moment I tried to scream but felt like I was paralyzed with fear trying to figure out what the freak I'm looking at until I finally snapped out of it and ran off into my mama room and told her what happened and what I had seen and my stepdaddy got up quickly looking outside and said he ain't see nothing at all and he ended up burning some cedar and also put some black ash on my forehead that night. Cedar is said to wear off evilness within the house. And ash comes from the wood stove, which is also said to have protection from getting nightmares. Mm. <laughs> Boy, if I seen uh, what you seen outside... I said, Daddy, look, uh, I understand your cedar and ash and stuff, but you need to, uh, you need to go get you some, 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 some Smith and Wesson. <laughs> you need to go get you a Uzi. Or you need to go get you a, a AR-15 or something, cause uh, something like that, boy. It's gonna take a little more than some ash to keep something like that away, boy. Guys, dog, man, that's our Navajo belief. Man, look, I can't even talk in the love tone no more, man. God, man, what? Boy, have I ever seen something like that? If I ever seen something that... Man, I ain't even got to see that. It could have just been a regular old per. If I just seen an old person sitting on top of a wood pile, that's enough right there to freak me out, man. Forget the thing. Great face with red eyes and black body and hair sticking all up. Hmm. <sighs> 
shoot, excuse me, man. Forget all that. Oops. I've been, um, oh, man, Stafford, what? You, oh, oh, wait, uh-uh. I'm glad I ain't Navajo, y'all. <laughs> y'all too, uh, <laughs> y'all too superstitious for me, boy. Mm. Uh, uh, oh, man. Boy, huh? I can, no, I couldn't see nothing like that. I know it. I know I'm carrying on, man, but if I seen some, uh, look, I ain't never heard no, Lord, Lord Jesus, don't let me have it. Boy, I don't even, look, I, let me tell you how I got scared tonight. So I'm coming home, and they had a, uh, and they had, you know how they had the mobile homes they carry on the, uh, on the dang truck, the pickup truck. You know, they carry it like on a big tow truck thing or whatever, a big flatbed thing. I seen the mobile home sitting on the side of the road. And that junk scared me because, you know, I'm just driving and I always drive down this road and I ain't never seen no. And it's just a big mobile home sitting there. I guess they're getting ready to take it off the thing tomorrow and set it up. Man, that junk freaked me out, man. Boy, I was getting, I had a, nah, I had that heaviness of fear fall on me when I seen that. And that's just, uh, so, you know, so, uh, I ain't gonna lie to you, it don't. You know, you can jump scare me pretty easy now, you know, like, bang, you know, on some jump scares, some unexpected stuff, you can get me easy. I'm going to jump every <laughs> time, boy. You know, see, one time I was leaving the house one night, and uh, it's like a little hill, and as I'm coming over the hill, you know how you can see the other stuff down the, on the other side, you know, because you're looking towards the top of the hill. And you can, as the hill go down on the other side, you can kind of start seeing the stuff as you make your way up. And I'm making my way up, man, and my window was kind of foggy. So it looked like the street light looked like a big giant yellow ghost. I'm telling you, that's what it looked like. <laughs> I guess it was later, so I don't know. It looked at it. So yeah, man, I, well, I hit the brake real quick. I said, man, I'm tripping, <laughs> you know. See, I got that natural high. I don't need no drugs, baby. I'm back in the love tone now. You know, I got that natural high, baby. Y'all, you know, y'all, who who know about that natural high? You don't need no dope. I don't need no drug, man. <laughs> so, I be tripping anyway. <laughs> so anyway, I get happy when I be talking to y'all, man. Um, so after doing that, I ended up asking my mom, could I sleep in her bed? Which you should have did. <laughs> um, Way before all this happened, 17 year old, here I am sleeping in my mama's bed. Whatever the heck that thing was terrified me. I believe it to be what you say. She says a skinwalker. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, that's a skinwalker, man. That is a skinwalker. And people say they come with sharp teeth and blah blah blah. No, they don't. <laughs> they just as human as you. But I perform. Uh, but performed with black magic. And there are many stories that my daddy and granddaddy and uncles told me about them really seeing one. They say it come in many different forms when they're under that black evil magic. Imagine they can be sitting right next to you. they will be the coyote running across your path. And the only way to rid yourself of his curse is to seek help of a medicine man. Interesting thing is that he will show you who the person is and what they've done to you. Yes, they are people under them skins they wear, but they are not to be messed with. To this day, I feel like I'm still being followed by this thing. I had other different encounters, but that's for another story at another time. When you live on a reservation, there is no way of being rid of this thing. Thank you for reading. All right, this is the scariest thing I've ever heard in my whole life. And um, this is too scary. You know, I don't know if it's just because I got a big imagination. And it's nighttime right now. It's like 11 something. So maybe that's what it is. Or I guess it's because... I don't know. <laughs> this is scary. This is a scary dang story, man. Now, Steffi, um... Sheesh, man. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray very hard for you. And uh, if you got some more, send it. Because um, 
Man, yeah, if you got some more send it. I hate that they ain't hear it, but if you got some more send it, because this is ridiculous. You know, I don't know how the heck you could be. You, you too brave for me, boy. I don't, like right now, I wanted to go out to the car and get my eye drops, but um, I will be getting them in the morning. <laughs>